Good morning, guys. I hope this finds you well. This morning, we're going to be looking at index laws. Okay, there are six index laws that we'll be looking at. The first of, of which will be a to the power of m times a to the power of n, which is equal to a to the power of m plus n. Now, I like to look at the general form of the rules to start with, and then I like to look at an example, which I'll follow up by now, by saying a cubed times a squared. Okay. Um, all right, so what does a cubed actually mean? Well, a cubed means a times a times a. A squared means a times a. And you can see because we're multiplying them together, it's going to be a times in between. So if I've got three of them and then two more of them, well, actually, I've got five of them, which is the same as saying 3 plus 2 is a to the power of 5. So again, when you multiply the bases, then we simply add the powers together. Rule number 2 is going to be the opposite of times, so that's obviously divide. So what's the opposite of add? Well, that becomes subtract, and you can see the rule is pretty much just opposite the first one. Okay, so an example of that, let's use a cubed divided by a squared. I'm going to rewrite that a little bit differently. I'm going to put the division sign as an over sign. So a cubed means a times a times a. a squared means a times a. We will now want to simplify that. I like to look at the um, sort of uh, the fact that 10 divided by 10 equals 1, 100 divided by 100 equals 1, a billion divided by a billion equals 1. So a divided by a also equals 1. Whenever you divide something by itself, the answer is always 1. So a divided by a equals 1. Now you can replace it with a 1 if you wish, you don't have to. Because what's going to happen, you're going to have 1 times 1 times a, well, that just leaves you with a. 1 times 1, well that equals 1, and you're just left with a. Now often what I do, I just say, for 1 on top, 1 on bottom, they cancel out. 1 on top, 1 on bottom, they cancel out. Um, and remembering that there is actually a 1 on the bottom there, um, and then you're just left with the, the A, or the 1A, I guess. Okay, the third rule, and this is probably the third of the most common uh, three rules, I would say, and that's A to the power of M, brackets, all to the power of N. Okay, hopefully you remember that rule, and it means that we actually multiply the indices together when that happens. I like to call it one inside the brackets and then one outside the bracket rule. An example of that would be A cubed, all squared. So if I square something, what does that mean? Well, that means we multiply it by itself. That now comes back to the first rule where the indexes, the bases are the same, sorry, therefore we add the indices, the indexes. That becomes a to the power of 6. But the quick way of doing it, obviously, is multiplying them together. Just be careful. Some questions might be something that looks like this. 2a cubed all squared, where the power of 2 works not just on the a cubed, but also on the 2. In that case, it'd be 2 squared, which is 4, and then a to the power of 6. So just a little bit, a little bit, a little, a little, a little bit careful when that happens, because um, you can get sort of tricked on that. Okay, rule number 4. a to the power of 0 equals 1. Anything to the power of zero is always equal to one. Now, why does that happen, you think? Okay, let's have a look at um, a to the power of one divided by a to the power of one, perhaps. Because I, the reason I've done that, one, take away one, because it's a division question, is a to the power of zero. But if we look at it the other way, if we divide something by itself, like five divided by five, 10 divided by 10, the answer is always one. So they cancel out, and we're just left with one divided by one, which we know to be one. That happens every single case. Likewise, be a little bit careful with questions like this. You might have five a to the power of zero, like that, or you might have five a to the power of zero, like this. These are two different questions. You can see in the first question, because there are no brackets, the power of zero only works on the five, so on the a. So we're left with five times, because there's a times in between, and then a to the power of zero is equal to one, so my answer is five.
where in the second example there, the zero, the power, the indice, is working on both of these. It's working on the five as well as the a. So five to the power of zero equals one. A to the power of zero equals one. So one times one equals one. Or the whole thing's to the power of zero, so it just equals one. Be a little bit careful. You can get, again, a bit tricked with that. The next one we're going to look at a to the power of, we'll say minus m. Okay, add negative m. Often I put negative 1 there, but negative m is, is okay. Now, whenever you have a negative with an indice, that automatically means 1 over. Okay, it, it means the inverse of that or the reciprocal. So it's 1 over. And then what you've just got left is a to the power of m. Um, there are a few tricky things with this. For example, a nice easy one is a to the negative 1. So it's just simply 1 over, which is the negative, and then it's a to the power of 1. a to the power of negative 3 would be simply 1 over a to the power of 3. 2a to negative 3, however, notice that the negative 3, like this question at the top there with a to the power of 0, the negative 3 is only working on the a. So what you're going to have is 2 over a cubed, because it's only putting the reciprocal of the a, not the 2. So, like before, just be a little bit careful with some of those questions. Okay, and number 6, and this is often the more challenging one, a to the power of m over n. So we're going to, have to look at a fractional indice, or a fractional index. Um, what we write here, that whenever you see a fraction, it's going to be a square root sign or a root sign. It might not be just a square root. It could be a cubed root, a fourth root, a fifth root. But the denominator determines the root. So I'm going to put the n there. And the m is my index, my indice. So we're going to put a to the power of m. Now, often the way to, to help me, I often think about a to the power of a half or a to the power of a third. They're nice and easy ones. A to the power of half is simply square root of A. You can put a 2 there if you wish. You don't have to because it's a square root. A to the power of a third is the cubed root of A. So that, that often helps me when I get a question like A to the power of 2 thirds. And I think, okay, which one goes? Which one is the root? Well, I think back to the A to the power of a third. Well, I know the 3 is the root, so it's going to be cubed root of A squared. Okay, so it's a harder question, and what we can actually do, we can actually combine some of those questions as well, um, which we're going to do in a moment. So I'm just going to give a couple of examples now. I want you to um, copy these out, and then maybe pause it, have a crack at it, and then see how you go. Okay, so write those questions out, as I said, and have a go at them. Okay, hopefully you've uh, had a crack at all these questions, so now I'm going to go through them. So let's go for the first one. The first one I call it a double barrel question. There are, are two steps. Um, I like to simplify the top part before actually finding the answer. So when we get the top part, 3 times 4, multiply the numbers together first and then deal with your algebra. a squared times a4, we're going to add the powers because we're multiplying. So we get a6 all over 2a. Now we can divide 12 divided by 2 equals 6. Or 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 12 6 times, if you want to do it that way. So we're left with 6, and we've got a to the power of 6 divided by a to the power of 1, which leaves you with a to the power of 5. The next question, the power of 0 is working on both the 5 and the a, so my answer is simply 1. Question C, the power is only working on the a, so we've got 3 times 1 times 2, which is going to equal 6. For D, the negative 4 is only working on the A, so I've got 2 over A to the power of 4. And the last question here, again, the half, the power of a half is only working on the A, so I've got 3 outside of the square root of A, or 3 times the square root of A. You can, you can put a little 2 there and a 1 if you wish, but probably at this stage I'd prefer if you didn't. Okay, now very last, I've got three more questions for you to do. These are slightly more challenging, only slightly. Again, pause it, have a crack at it, and see if you can get them right. 
Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you had a crack at these questions. Let's have a look at the first one. The negative a half is only working on the A, not the 3. So automatically I've got 3 times. Now I'm going to simplify this first part. I've got a negative. We know that negative automatically means 1 over. I've now left with a to the power of a half. Well, a to the power of a half is the square root of a. So I'm going to put the square root of a. So I'm finally left with 3 times 1 is 3 over the square root of a. And that's my final simplified answer. Okay, b. The power of 0 is only working on the a. So I've got 2 times 1, which is 2, times... Now, 3a to the negative 4, well, the negative 4 is only working on the a, so I've got 3 over a to the power of 4. I can now simplify. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6 over a to the power of 4, and that's my final answer. Then the very last one, I can do the numbers first because you can see the power of a half only works on the a. The 6 is only working on the a. So 2 times 3 is 6, and then a half. Now, because we're timesing these together, we're adding the powers. So we've actually got 6 and a half. So you could write 6 and a half, but as an indice, that's a little bit tricky. So what I'm actually going to write, I'm going to be writing 6 and a half as an improper fraction. That's a mixed number. So that's going to be... 13 over 2. So 13 over 2. Now the bottom part, remember, that is going to be my square root. Oops, I forgot to put my a there. And I'm going to put a there. And then up to the power of 13. And remember, we've got the 6 out the front there. Okay, that's quite a tricky little question there. So again, just with that one, we did 2 times 3, which was my 6. My 6 at the front. I then did a half plus 6, which is 6.5 up there. I then convert that to an improper fraction, as you saw. The bottom part was my uh, root. The top part was my um, index. And then we put it back into this. Remember, the power only works on the A, so that's what goes into the square root sign. 6 goes out the front. Nice tricky question. Okay, guys, look, I hope you found this uh, useful, this tutorial. Um, any questions, please make sure you post either on uh, YouTube or on, uh, on our class pages. Um, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day.